The work that you've described, the four questions and a turnaround are just so incredibly easy. I can't help but wonder, when you look back at your life and where you've been, the path that you've walked, are there things that you can point to and say, I feel very good about this or about that? Mm. I was afraid this would happen. (laughs) You know, what I can say is sitting here with you is that's what's good. I just have to I just have to go there. You ask me, I have to tell you. This is good. This is really good. So for you, success in life is not necessarily about what will happen tomorrow or yesterday at all, is it? No. I say if you want fear on purpose, get a plan, get a future. Oh, now you've just destroyed a whole lot of management consultants' work. You know that? I mean, a lot of people have earned a lot of money on teaching those things. Yes, and, and you're I'm saying not, don't do it. Huh? No, I'm not. Well, you're saying, not saying that. No, I'm not that, saying that. don't get a plan. I'm saying if you want fear on purpose, get a plan. I'm not saying don't do it. What would we be without our plan? You know, who would we be without a plan? <laughs> I like to say if you want shame and guilt on purpose, get a past. Conjure up a story of the past. And I also like to say that my experience is any story just appears now. And because we haven't investigated, it's it's like it's concrete. So it really would imply that there is a past or future. That's the power of a story that has not been investigated. So I just simply appear as this now. It sounds almost like you were saying if we have a story of our past and we're attached to it, that that perpetuates the past, maybe. Is that close? Well, the story appears now. There is no past. The story of, the, of an apparent past appears now. And we think it's real because we haven't investigated it. It's a simple investigation. And this isn't, you know, this is not a... These questions don't have a, um, a purpose. They're simply self-inquiry that bring people um, a lot of freedom. But only the past appears now, and even to speak of it would keep us from, you know, the attachment to what's being said would even keep us from this moment. That's its purpose, without inquiry. So somehow you've associated fear with that. You said that's a way to perpetuate fear or or create fear? The story of of a future. Yes, it's unnatural because it would take me from you. It would take me, if I am mentally in my husband's business or my children's business, the experience is immediate loneliness and separation. And it would keep me from you. Why would I be with my husband and children mentally when I can be here with you? This is my whole world. Why would I deny it? Here now, I don't see husband. I don't see my children. I see you. I see you. This is my purpose. I don't need a future. I'm living my future. This is it now. And there's nothing sweeter. If a person would inquire, they could see the sweetness always, always, under any circumstances. And this is not easily heard. No, it isn't. Because when you first said that, what came to my mind was, but don't you care about? Mm, yes. And, and, and put, fill in the blank. You know, it could be anything. Yeah. But don't you care about it? It sounds as if you're saying, no, I don't. It doesn't matter to me about these other things that aren't happening right this moment. Yeah, it could certainly sound that way. What I care about is sitting here with you. I don't see pain and suffering. Show me pain and suffering. And when I see it, yes, I'll be present with it as I am in this moment. There's no greater gift I have to, to, um, to give. When people are in their suffering or in their pain, I'm the one they can say the truth to. I hurt, this hurts, or I feel good, I feel wonderful. Across the board, and I'm present for that. I'm not afraid of pain, I'm not afraid of joy. What would be different in Central America where there were a lot of uh, starving children around? What would change? For us. Mm. I might just, if someone approached me that was hungry, I might just sit with them and if they ask for help and I would say, sweetheart, you're hungry. Is that really true? That feeling in your belly, that pain you experience, that's hunger. Can you really know that that's true? And yes, I understand. And what do you get in the moment for attaching to the story you're hungry? And who would you be without that story in this moment? 
and they may find what they have been hungering for. And in my experience, they always do. And I've been to these places, and I have been to these townships, and I've been to these ghettos. And it's the same everywhere. When a person inquires, they're free. This is self-realization. We have been been husband realized and wife realized and poverty realized for centuries. Now can we be self-realized? It's much easier than healing a world that doesn't need healed of anything other than perception. And not even that. You know, if a person doesn't ask, then I don't see a problem. And if they ask, you know, I just sit like a friend. And thousands of us are doing that now. It's not special. This is nothing special about this. Did I hear correctly that you're saying you don't answer questions that haven't been asked? What would I have for you? It would assume that I know more and that you know less. And that cannot be the case. Everyone has equal wisdom. Why would I give you something you already have? So you don't even see that there are people that are wiser than others, perhaps? No, not ever. No. No, there's equal air, equal wisdom. Byron Katie is the lady you're listening to. This is Living Successfully. We'll continue. Please stay with us.